So I'm going to spend the next 20 or 30 minutes going over how we're doing as a school, and then we'll move on to uh, the awarding of the endowed uh, professorships. So this has been one of the most transformative years in the history of Mount Sinai, both the medical school and the health system for a number of reasons. Uh, we have experienced tremendous growth as uh, we have continued to integrate uh, the former continuum system to become full partners uh, in the Mount Sinai health system. And that has included uh, bringing on almost 900 uh, physicians and scientists uh, to the faculty of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And I think it's fair to say that if not the only medical school that has brought on so many physicians and scientists in one year, uh, we're one of very, very few that have done that in recent memory. And uh, it's, it's been a very positive experience to welcome uh, so many uh, new faculty. They've brought enormous expertise in terms of being outstanding physicians and also uh, a number of scientists that have, are doing excellent work and are now collaborating uh, with other scientists in the uh, medical school. And we expect continued growth in 2016. We have a number of notable appointments. So this is, is in no way a uh, full list, but I want to mention that in the past year, we promoted Lakshmi Devi to Dean for Academic Development and Enrichment recently, and we haven't done a full announcement. Uh, I have appointment Roz Wright to Dean for Translational Biomedical Research, taking over from Hugh uh, Sampson, who's done a terrific job in that role. Uh, we have several new chairs, including uh, those who are on the dais today. Welcoming Barbara Vickery from UCLA, the new chair of neurology. Today's her first day, so it's a good start. <laughs> Lisa Galatz from Washington University. She's been here for two weeks. So far, so good. <laughs> chair of orthopedics and uh, Robert Wright, our new chair of preventive medicine, who has taken over uh, from Phil Androgen, who was a legend at Mount Sinai, has provided great leadership uh, of that department for so many years and stays on our faculty as Dean of Global Health to continue to provide us uh, leadership. We also have named a number of new institute uh, leaders, including Ron Tamler in clinical diabetes, Roz Wright, who's going to be leading our CTSA, Pramjat Singh, our Global Health Institute, the Arnhold Global Health Institute, uh, Judy Cho, who's taking over from uh, Erwin Bottinger as the new leader of the Bronfman Institute for Personalized Medicine, Roy Cohn Primary Care Institute, uh, Ravi Iyengar initiating a new institute on systems biomedicine, and Emanuela Teoli, who we've recently uh, recruited, uh, who is an expert in epidemiology it relates to cancer as uh, head of the Institute for Translational Epidemiology. We provide some of the most uh, the highest quality care you can receive anywhere. And that is, uh, has been noted in a number of different ways. Uh, you know, one is best doctors in New York, where our health system has more best doctors than any other single health system uh, in the area. Our NIH funding continues to grow in a very robust fashion. Uh, the NIH funding is the coin of the realm when it comes to measurement of research excellence because it's peer reviewed. It's, it, you are awarded grants based on the opinion of your peers. And as many of you know, the NIH budget has remained flat for many years. Despite that, we continue to increase our NIH funding. Uh, the most recent data for the uh, fiscal year, which just ended uh, yesterday, we have at least another 7% growth to $265 million, which places us well within uh, the top 20 uh, medical schools and um, we're now at 265 million, which is the biggest in our history, including when we had gotten ARA funding uh, a number of years ago. And you know, one uh, index of how high quality our scientists are at the individual level is how competitive are they in getting NIH grant grants at the level of the individual investigator. And here we rank number two in the country in terms of research dollars per principal investigator. Several major awards, uh, but one in particular is uh, being awarded a National Cancer Institute designated Cancer Center. Uh, this was only possible through the leadership of Stephen 
Burka. Uh, several year, years ago, he promised that he would get it, and he did. And uh, that's a high bar, because there were a number of NCI centers in New York City, and to convince the Cancer Institute to award uh, another one meant that you had to be better than the rest, and Stephen deserves enormous credit. Uh, we also had the major uh, translational research grant uh, renewed, which is also a high bar, and, and you, Sampson, deserves enormous credit uh, for that. And you can see we got several other awards that were important, particularly uh, an award from Diversity Magazine, which recognizes the excellence in higher education as it relates to diversity. Uh, and, and Gary Butts deserves a lot of credit for that recognition. The quality of our medical students uh, remains extremely high, and every year it seems that the class is better than ever. And these are the metrics of the class that just entered. Uh, in August, and you can see that most of us uh, who are physicians in this room would not get into the Mount Sinai uh, <laughs> class, including myself, with an average GPA of 3.82 and an MCAT score, which places you in the top, you know, 5%. But on top of that, the quality, uh, the character of the students that enter our medical school is something to uh, be admired. So we're all very proud of the medical students that matriculate here. As many of you know, we also have students that come to Mount Sinai to receive not only an MD, but uh, they get a PhD, and uh, they stay here for at least eight years getting both uh, degrees. And here the quality is also enormously high. You can see the average GPA is 3.9. Straight A's is 4.0, so it means that maybe they got to be here and there. But aside from that, they're extremely uh, uh, talented. A, no a number of notable accomplishments by our uh, Department of Medical Education. Uh, there are many of them, so I'm not going to go through everything on uh, this slide, but I want to you know, acknowledge the leadership of David Muller and his team. Uh, we've established uh, unique partnerships, as Peter May uh, noted, including partnerships with Google Life Sciences, uh, Deloitte uh, Partnership. We have um, entered relationships with IBM. And, and so forth. So, you know, our students get enormous opportunities ranging from working with innovative companies that are just entering the life science area, like, like Google and Apple and IBM, but also, you know, working with companies that are beginning to specialize in healthcare leadership, uh, like a variety of consulting uh, firms. And we've gotten some very important recognition in terms of the leaders of medical education. David Muller, in, in uh, this uh, fall, is receiving the most prestigious award from the AAMC, the Association of American Medical Colleges, for his leadership in teaching and education. And, and Gary Butts recently got an award uh, for his work as it relates to uh, social responsibility and, and justice and uh, diversity. We are working uh, very hard to integrate uh, the, the training programs, the residency programs, uh, throughout uh, the system. When Continuum became part of the Mount Sinai Health System, uh, all of the training programs uh, came under the sponsorship of the Icon School of Medicine. So now we are responsible for the training of over 2,000 house staff, which makes us the largest single program training the next generation of uh, physicians uh, in the country. And so we are working on how to make all of the programs outstanding to take advantage of our size so that the uh, trainees can uh, rotate throughout all of our different hospitals, which have different centers of excellence. And this slide just uh, indicates some of the progress we've made over the past year. Our graduate school continues to be very strong. We enrolled uh, one of the largest class in our history, uh, 44 students who are going to be working with us to get their uh, PhD, also very strong uh, metrics. And uh, when you look in total at the state of our graduate school, it has experienced enormous growth over the last several years that trains individuals across the continuum uh, from very basic science to clinical research and now population health research to guide systems like ours to provide outstanding care in the most efficient manner. Uh, we have two new master's programs that started in the past year, uh, one on master's in biostatistics and our master's program in healthcare delivery uh, leadership. 
Um, among the notable accomplishments of the uh, graduate school is our uh, initiatives that relate to entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, like I mentioned before with the, uh, the medical students. So we are continuing to provide an environment for our graduate students to make discoveries that lead to new treatments for the patients who need them most, new devices for surgery, um, and uh, ultimately resulting in, in important intellectual property, company formation, and so forth. And that training starts at the beginning with our uh, PhD uh, students. I want to acknowledge the great work of John Morrison uh, over the last nine years as dean of our graduate school. Uh, he left uh, a couple of weeks ago to take on a new position at the University of California at Davis. We owe him uh, a debt of gratitude for his inspiring leadership over the last nine years. This slide lists some of his accomplishments. Uh, I have formed a search committee to recruit a new dean for the graduate school and dean for basic science. Uh, which was the, the uh, deanships that was held by John Morrison, and we already have an outstanding group of candidates to take on these positions. Some of the data regarding our research uh, funding, I mentioned uh, that we are number two in the United States in terms of uh, research dollars uh, per uh, scientist. We don't know who the other ones are. We don't know who number one is uh, because it's kept uh, anonymous, but there we are. We're number 79 there, and so we're ranked second. We are uh, ranked seventh in research dollars per square foot. Now, uh, now we used to be number one, and that's not good. <laughs> it, <laughs> it means that I was go always getting uh, phone calls and meetings with scientists saying they need more space, and it's you know, and it's tough because our scientists are doing so well; they need more space. So we were number one a couple of years ago. We opened the Hess Building which was very important, and it's been a great success, and we went to number 12, which is about right, because you want to manage your space effectively, uh, but you don't want it so dense that the scientists can't do great work. And now we're number seven, so now I'm hearing from the scientists that we need a new building. <laughs> Several years ago, we started an affiliation with Rensselaer Polytech Institute, uh, and one of the main reasons was it's a very strong uh, engineering and computer science school. Uh, we don't have an engineering school, we needed that expertise to move forward in areas like uh, genetics and biomedical informatics. And they did not have a strong affiliation with a medical school. So it really, it's been a win-win affiliation. We've got uh, a lot of collaborative grants uh, now ongoing and uh, most notably uh, through the leadership of, of uh, Bob Wright and uh, his faculty, uh, we were just awarded uh, two grants worth over $20 million over a several year period that was in part related to a strong collabor uh, collaboration with uh, RPI. Just want to mention two of, uh, of, of the institutes where there's very exciting progress being made under new leadership. As I mentioned before, Pramjot Singh is the new head of the Arnhold Global Health Institute. Uh, he has hit the ground running. He has enormous contacts uh, with leaders uh, throughout the world as it relates to working to deliver better care for those who need it most throughout the world. And he's gonna position us as a leader in enabling the great work we do here right in New York to help people around the world. So you'll be hearing more about that uh, over the next several years. And as I mentioned, Emanuela Teoli has taken over our Translational Epidemiology Institute from Paolo Buffetta. And she has a very exciting vision to move research uh, related to epidemiology into many different areas including mental health and cancer and heart disease. And as many of you know, some of the biggest strides in prevention of disease results from epidemiologic studies, like heart disease, where we know that the role of exercise and not smoking and so forth uh, is, has had a bigger impact than almost anything else uh, thus far when it comes to preventing heart disease. Peter emphasized the innovation culture at Mount Sinai. And, you know, for the last several years, I've been saying we're a Silicon Valley medical school, and I, I want to reverse that, where people in Silicon Valley say they are a Mount Sinai-based uh, institution. And, you know, we are getting there. One of the indices to measure how well we are doing when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship uh, relates to our tech transfer uh, group 
which is one of the largest and I think most talented among any medical school. We call them Mount Sinai Innovation Partners. And they interact with our scientists to help our scientists bring their discoveries ultimately to the patient. They help us evaluate what discoveries are most amenable to be able to do that. And you can see over the last several years, they've engaged more and more of our faculty and staff and trainees, teaching them what it takes to be an entrepreneur, what it takes to commercialize a finding, and give them guidance along that path that ultimately can lead to a new drug and a new device. So we're very happy with the progress being made, and we'll continue to help our scientists do their best in this regard. You know, one of the most important jobs of leadership, of being a dean, uh, is to provide an environment for our scientists to do uh, their best. And that's uh, one of the major responsibilities of Lakshmi Devi, to identify what, what are important factors for our faculty at every level, whether it's an instructor, an assistant professor, uh, to make them uh, successful. So we're always trying to learn from our faculty what they need. This, and this is an ongoing initiative, you, you never can be satisfied. And so through uh, the work of Lakshmi and uh, now Liz Howell, who we've named to Associate Dean for Academic Development, uh, that we're always continuing to help our faculty do the very best uh, they can. As I mentioned, we, we've been integrating an entire new system of thousands of doctors and multiple hospitals uh, to, to Mount Sinai. And so from a research point of view, we have expanded the infrastructure that was based here to help the scientists, physicians uh, throughout our health system do the best they can. And that, so there's a couple things we've done. For example, IRBs. IRBs are what enable you to get approval to do research. And we wanted to make it easier for our scientists and physicians to do research throughout our entire health system. So one of the things we did in the last year is to enable that if you get approval of a institutional review board at one of our hospitals, you will have approval to do research now throughout the entire system. We have centralized grants and contracts and policies and guidance around conflict of interest and are now reaching out to all of our faculty about the importance of intellectual property and patenting and so forth. Uh, the faculty practice, so that's the clinical arm of the medical school under the leadership of Bert Rea, who's uh, this became the CEO over the past year and has done a fantastic job. Uh, in many respects, this is a, an important engine of the school to deliver the highest quality care at the, most efficiently. Uh, it's continued to grow in a robust fashion thus far through 2015. At uh, June year to date, we've grown another 7%. Our margin is over 2%. Uh, so we're doing well, but we need to do even better and grow uh, even further, and I'll share that with you. And, and one of the ways we are growing is now uh, integrating, and we're in, this is a process, and we're in the middle of it, of integrating uh, literally almost all of the physicians that have been practicing at the former Continuum Hospitals, but now Mount Sinai Beth Israel, Mount Sinai Roosevelt, Mount Sinai St. Luke's, our ambulatory uh, networks, to bring them into the faculty practice. And there are many advantages uh, for both the school and the faculty uh, to do that. So we've started that process in 2015. And as you can see from this slide, in January of 2016, we're gonna be moving a lot more of those departments into our faculty practice. We're also gonna be growing our space uh, because uh, partic particularly the space on this campus for our faculty practice, uh, we've outgrown it. Uh, the, the building on 5 East 98th Street is, is now, you know, packed. And so we, we've needed to expand. And this year we're expanding in a number of different directions. And you can see how many uh, new programs that we are uh, opening and expanding into new space. Uh, well over 100,000 uh, square feet of additional new clinical space uh, that will be opening this fall and into 2016. That's a very exciting process. And it means that in almost every department, uh, we are recruiting uh, new physicians of the highest quality uh, to Mount Sinai. Uh, the outpatient visits continue to grow and that will expand much uh, to a much greater level in 2016. There's one area that we need to improve and, and that is in the ratings of patient uh, satisfaction. Uh, 
we need our patients to feel that we have the most patient-centered care you can find any place. And, and we need to continue to improve in that, uh, in that space so that we are among the very uh, best anywhere nationwide. And so we have uh, initiated uh, a number of principles are working with all our faculty, our chairs, to improve patient access, patient flow once the patient comes to one of our treatment sites, to increase transparency, and as a motivation for those physicians in the room as part of the practice, uh, we'll, we'll be sharing patient satisfaction scores with other physicians and departments so there's some peer competition to do the very best you can to provide patient-centered care. Other initiatives which relate to the entire system, the Phillips Ambulatory Care Center, we think, is a gem of our system, and we're going to continue to invest in the Phillips Ambulatory Care Center at Union Square. We're going to be renovating it, beautifying the facility to improve patient access and patient flow, and we'll be expanding multiple programs in that center to meet the needs of our communities. So um, what about the road ahead? You know, one of the reasons that we welcomed the former continuum into the Mount Sinai Health System is that we, we felt that given the challenges of the current health care environment, the Affordable Care Act, that we needed to uh, be very much involved in population health initiatives. And that is, how do you take care of a large number of communities of different socioeconomic groups, different ethnic groups, and provide everybody the highest quality of care efficiently. We want to be a national leader in the ability to do that. Um, and, and as you can see from one of the ads that Peter alluded to, we'll know we're being successful when we're focusing on wellness and prevention and keeping people out of our hospitals. We're also going to take care of more people as part of essentially like our own insurance products so that we will be incentivized by providing that high quality care most efficiently. And uh, we project that we might have over 750,000 lives under a Mount Sinai based value based uh, contract by 2019. To do that, we've recruited a number of population health leaders. We've improved our infrastructure to do population health. We've established new relationships with government and commercial payers. And we're focusing like a laser beam on improvements in quality, safety, and service. And I want to acknowledge some of the new leadership that has joined uh, the Mount Sinai uh, Health System uh, over the past year, in particular, Neam Gandhi, who is our chief population health officer. We've recruited Andrew Snyder uh, to be our chief clinical integration officer. He starts in a, in a few weeks. And we've given major roles in these initiatives to Jeff Barber and Ed Lucy. Finances, you know, you can have a lot of good ideas on how to uh, move your school forward, but if you're not financially disciplined and are in st strong financial shape, you're not going to be uh, successful. And so we have a very strong system of monitoring uh, the financial performance of the school, and our goal every year is to break even so that the philanthropy that uh, as evidenced by those of many of you in this room that is so generous in helping Mount Sinai move forward is used for new initiatives, recruitment of new faculty, development of new programs scientifically and clinically, as opposed to just relying on philanthropy for operations. In order to do that, we need to, uh, every year, make sure we have a break-even result. And uh, we've done a good job of doing that over the last several years and are uh, so far on track for uh, this year. The financial challenges uh, are many. Uh, it includes the difficulty in getting NIH funding, although we have competed as well as anybody in the country. There are challenges associated with the Affordable Care Act in terms of reimbursement, changing rules, uh, penalties uh, if you're not providing the highest quality uh, care. And so we have to meet all of those challenges to be successful uh, fiscally. We work with every department, whether it's a basic science department or a clinical department, to be successful in terms of their fiscal management. We meet with the faculty, uh, the chairs, on a regular basis to help them be successful 
in the endeavor of fiscal uh, responsibility and uh, growth. And you know, we've had a change over the last several years the way we compensate uh, our physicians. You know, when I was in medical school and was a younger faculty member, you, you were able to do research, deliver clinical care, and be an educator like a triple threat. It's not possible anymore. Um, um, whatever you do, Frank, unfortunately, there needs to be a revenue behind it. If you're going to be a full-time researcher, you need to be successful in getting your grants. If you're going to be an outstanding clinician, you, you have to be productive and provide patient-centered care of the highest quality. If you're going to be an educator, you've got to excite your students, and we monitor the, the uh, performance of our educators. And so the compensation is tied to performance, whether you're a clinician, you're a researcher, or you're an educator. And again, we work with our leadership to make sure that um, we're incentivizing our physicians and scientists and providing them the right environment to be successful. As Peter mentioned, we have an advertising uh, campaign. Uh, I hope you have been uh, inspired by these, these ads. There'll be more to come. Uh, these are some of the, the ads that relate to the school. I do like the one about offering a degree and changing the world, because that's what we're after in terms of our students. I, I was, had mixed feelings about Silicon Valley because I said I want to reverse that, but um, that'll be in a couple of years. <coughs> well, we're, you know, a lot of uh, students and potential faculty go to our website, and so we've spent a lot of time and effort and resources to improve the school website. We're working um, to use the website to be a good research portal to enable uh, our scientists to more easily navigate uh, the bureaucracy of submitting grants and, and monitoring uh, grants utilizing uh, the website. And uh, we're working with the faculty to be able to use their creativity to develop their own personalized uh, website. And we're making progress there, but we, but we want 100% of our laboratories, of our investigators, to reimagine, to rejuvenate their website, because that's where the students go when they make decisions on where they're going to uh, get the next part of their education. And social media is also you know, very important to get the word out about all the great things that we are, are doing. And so we're, we have a number of different initiatives as it relates to that. Uh, doximity, and this is mainly to, uh, in talking to our uh, physicians, uh, doximity now is essentially the Facebook for physicians. 60% uh, of all physicians, not just the academic related physicians, but all physicians now belong to doximity. It's, uh, it's a way of communicating with Alum, alumni to alumni, or specialist to specialist, or even uh, on personal matters of common uh, interest. So it's an important site. It's become more important recently because U.S. News and World Report use it for rankings of medical schools, of hospitals, of residency programs. They query the doctors who are located on the Doximity site about medical schools, hospitals, and training programs. So we need to make sure, and we're working very hard to do this, that all of our current doctors are on the site and all of the alumni associated with the medical school and our training programs are also on the site so uh, they can participate in these uh, rankings. So uh, that's a very important initiative going forward. And it'll also be a way of engaging our alumni on an ongoing basis to fill them in on all the great things that are happening at their school. I want to remind people that we have another uh, innovation conference, October 27th to 28th. And I want to end uh, to mention that we're going to be undertaking another strategic planning process uh, for the medical school in 2016. Uh, we developed together with uh, many of our students, many of our faculty uh, who are still here, a strategic plan uh, for the school in 2005 and 2006 that formed the basis of a lot of the things we've accomplished over the last 10 years. New research institutes, recruitment of great faculty, the building of the Hess building, and, uh, and many more. 
And so we're going to use 2016 uh, to do a couple of things. One, to review what worked and what didn't work in relationship to our, the strategic plan that we developed, because you don't bat, <laughs> you don't bat a thousand. And secondly, uh, to help us chart the path forward so that we're going to look at together and we'll, we're going to developing a process and committees to determine what areas do we need to invest in to not only maintain our excellence among the very best, but to do even better. And you know, you never, it's hard to predict, predict sometimes. 10 years ago, you know, we didn't know uh, how genomics was going to become so important. And luckily, we made major investments in genomics as an example. So we're going to have to come together as a team and uh, think out of the box and be innovative and be, be entrepreneurial in developing our strategic plan for the next five or 10 years. So uh, here's a role model for us as we think about how to move forward. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. Let me make it louder. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because, because they are they're hard. hard. The point because is. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. So, as many of you know, that's President Kennedy talking about going to the moon by the end of the decade. And he said that it was going to require a lot of effort and it was going to be hard. In terms of our developing our strategic plan for the next five or ten years, it's going to be hard. But we've got to develop our own moonshots to, uh, to, to do the best for our patients and uh, moving forward and for our students. So thank you very much.